evening, everybody, and welcome online to our Jubilee Wednesday evening. Tonight, we're starting a five-series teaching series with Pastor Steve, all out of Ephesians and some, Ephesians 4 and some places in Romans, and we're excited for you to be with us here tonight. If you'd like to go ahead and share the link and invite some friends to join us tonight, that would be great. And of course, we always enjoy um, your sharing in the chat, any revelations you're getting, anything that you're hearing, and we just welcome you to be part with us tonight. For those of you here in the room, we bless you and we thank you as you are the worship team tonight joining us, lifting up and exalting Jesus. So we're going to start tonight with worship. Let's go ahead and pray and we'll begin. Holy One, we glorify you. We exalt you. Jesus Christ is Lord. Today during our prayer, that declaration came forth over and over and over again. And we recognize that the spirit of deliverance is upon us right now in our midst that we are to declare over every place, over every dark place, that Jesus Christ is Lord. We're releasing the light, the illumination of Jesus, and we're going to watch widespread deliverance happening from heaven right now. So Father, we exalt you by exalting your Son. We glorify you because we are here to glorify your Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. And we come now and we ask, Lord, that you would reveal our hearts so we can invite you into every place where we have not surrendered our hearts to your Lordship. And we ask, Father, that you would grant us your heart to see as you do, to hear what you're saying, Father, through the Son, that we would be a beautiful bride, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ giving glory to, and honor to Jesus. It's in that perfect and precious and powerful name that we pray, amen.
let's everybody declare the newness of life. Let's just declare that what God has done is fully manifesting. Newness of life. All things are new. All things have become new. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If your life feels terrible, say, I have a new life in Christ. If you're struggling with your own narrative that just is telling you it's never going to change, say, I have a new life in Jesus Christ. All that he has accomplished, I have entered into. All the Father did to him, he did for me. I'm entered in. Newness of life. Yes, God. Yes, God. Newness of life. You've made it all new. It's new every day, continually new. Ah, <laughs> yes, God. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Yes. Let's tell somebody, what welcomes someone here in the house. I welcome you online. Go let them know. I want us to be a prophet tonight and say, God's made your life new. Your life has been made new. Your life has been made new. It's made new every day. Newness isn't the first time we believe. It's every time we believe. We're brought fully back into the center of Christ, into his purpose for us, his place for us, his grace toward us. It's just unstoppable life flowing. And we rejoice and bless everybody in line. We're starting a new series, Perfecting the Saints. So get ready. We're going to get perfected. Before you think, oh, no, that's like, that's like, uh, you know, OCD. I don't want to think that way. No, it's not that at all. It's really simply just letting him make us complete, repair us, renew us, restore us, fix us, heal us, hold, make us whole. And it's just his intent because we were made that way when he came out of the grave. Yay. But first off, let's, we're coming out of the crises and we're coming out in health and wealth. And so since we're doing this teaching, we're going, we just we put back worship in the front and so then we can get out and get into the Word. But what I want to do is I want to, I really want to encourage us to get ready. In Genesis 15, when God makes a covenant with Abraham, when Abraham believes God, and it's imputed to him as righteousness. First time we hear faith mentioned, we hear righteousness mentioned, we hear, we see a covenant being cut. And in that moment, God speaks to Abraham 430 years into the future about he, he and his family will go to Egypt. The Amalekites who rule the land still have to be judged. Their iniquity hasn't grown to the height. So not until that time is done is he is it ready for them to come back? So there's a timing. God has timings in everything. And it's there, one nation's based on another nation and so forth. But he says, when you come back, you're not going to leave empty-handed. You will be oppressed. You'll go through some really tough times, but you're going to come back with the wealth of Egypt. Okay? I bet no one remembers that 400 years later, 439, 390 years later. I don't know when it was. But when God called Moses in Exodus 4, and he's telling him what's going to happen. He's talking about the resistance of Pharaoh. He's going to withstand him. He's going to fight him. But God's going to give them favor with Egypt, and they're going to come out not empty-handed. So now there's already the prophecy brought back forth, and now Moses is carrying that word. So we go through nine plagues. We go through a really difficult time. But all of a sudden, Pharaoh is finally bending the knee, forced to submit, to submit, yielding. And Moses says to the Israelites, get your lamb, get yourself ready for Passover, and go to your neighbors and ask them for all the gold and silver they possess. And because God had established his word through these series of, of, of judgments and through the fact through Moses' interaction and the people beginning to see. They were ready. They, they went. They asked for wealth. They got it. They got their lambs. They put the blood on the doorpost. And they passed. The, the death angel passed over. There was no death in their homes. And they left that night rich and in a hurry. So what would it look like if that happened to you? 
what would it look like for God to just turn things around in such a fashion that something he intended to do 400 years earlier, but now it's the day he's going to do it. It's a suddenly. I don't know, but I'm expectant. And I want to be expectant for everybody, every one of us. I'm talking about really radical blessing. When he said, coming out of our crises in health and in wealth, he didn't mean we're going to barely be getting by and half the time sick. No, we're going to be in health, in wealth, and it's going to be super abundant. So can we pray that? Can we receive that? Yes. So Lord, in the name of Jesus, everybody knows how to give. It's a bit, if you're watching online, you've seen all the slides, I hope. But we want to declare right now that we agree that when you speak a word, whether it's 400 years earlier or four, you know, four months earlier or a year earlier, you, you want us to hold it because it is truth and you are faithful to perform what you promise. So we receive health and wealth. We give to you first and foremost our tithes and offerings. You have to have it first. You're the first in all things, so you're the first to be given our resources. And now, Lord, we rejoice. We rejoice in miracle breakthroughs, phenomenal outpourings, windfalls that we weren't expecting, neighbors handing things that we didn't know we were going to ask, and things just breaking open because we're coming out of the crisis in health and wealth. We've submitted to you, Lord Jesus, throughout this entire journey. And so we're coming out. We're coming out as a mighty army, though we may look upon ourselves as feeble or as even if we look upon ourselves as sheep, lambs on the way to slaughter, we're coming out. We praise you, Lord, for your mercy endures forever. And we're declaring this over every household in Jubilee, every family, and for the whole living body of Jesus that's coming forth to the sound of your voice, rising up to enter in to the new, the new that you have prepared, the new, the new, the new, the new. And we receive now, Lord. And we ask you just to let the blessing of God break open. And we'll testify to you that it was your word that you sent that healed us, delivered us from all our troubles and struggles. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go ahead. We'll, buckets are out here for those in the house. You know how to give on site, online. We'll worship for a moment and then we'll get into the word. You said it. And it's you who takes them down Why would I question What you're doing now You are there on every single page of my life story the author you know the start and end you've shown up every time and you will show up again I don't need the answers I'm just looking for your glory moment I can rest because no matter what the test you were God before and you will be
every breath, your presence in every sorrow, your presence in every tear, and you always know just where to find me. Your presence in every loss, your presence today, tomorrow. You promise to never leave, and I know you're here, right here, right now. You are my great high priest. You understand my weakness. You passed into the heavens of my you're always interceding. You hold my every promise. This is my great confession. You are God. There is no other. You are God. There is no other. You are God. So I praise you, Lord, from everlasting to everlasting. Oh, I I'm in you. One. Ah, glory to God. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we just finished another eight hours of nonstop intercession, prayer, fasting in the sanctuary. But we're taking this hour and a half rather than culminating the day of prayer, which was incredible. They're building. We want to step into a preparation, the... the where he says the perfecting of the saints, and we're going to set that introduction and in place. So we're all students, we're all activating, we're all coming into the fullness. It's nothing to will to or make decisions for. This is basically, I'm starting to read your inheritance that was given to us. Thank you guys for the worship. Awesome, awesome. Oh, men, Saturday, 8 a.m. in the sanctuary. If you haven't registered, please go online, register. We are going to have what we're calling inheritance, two-hour meeting, worship. There'll be testimonies, and there'll be a chance for us to see our place and become secure in that and begin to receive and begin to possess and begin to move forward. I believe that God's sovereign. And men, if you have any doubt about whether God's going to use it, all the women are praying for us. So, and, you know, chance for them to put their faith for God to activate us in our inheritance, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of prayer going on that. So don't miss that day, all right? Don't miss the day. Get, get here. It will be online, I'm happy to say. Those of you who can't be in the building for whatever reason, we will be online 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. We start right on time. We end right on time. It's just one of the few things I do consistently. So go, glory to God on that. <clears throat> then the 28th, which is what we're marching to, Passover, first day of Passover and Palm Sunday, we come back officially as a new jubilee into this next season. We've spent a year in forced rest, and there's time to enter into that rest if you haven't fully. Yeah, Sunday, we were camping, really felt the Lord saying, not everyone has entered into my rest this year, but there's still time. So I wrote that in the secret place just to give encouragement, and it's a simple path, and it's submission. We use the word surrender, it's submission. It's the same thing. Surrender is kind of, okay, I'm, I surrender, but submission is I surrender to someone in a fashion as they're asking me to, and I'm going to agree with them according to what they're said about them, and that's our Lord Jesus Christ. And the more we come into that place, and we're, we're in breakthrough. So I, those are the things we're doing We'll be in the courtyard unless, uh, unless it rains or wind blows or the Holy Spirit moves. We'll follow him. But, but it's, I'm excited uh, for this formatting, this reformatting. So to that, let's, let me take a moment, pray, and let's get into the word on this. Dear Heavenly Father, you, you overwhelm me in times with you. 
and the visions you revealed to me in your word concerning the end, the fullness of time, and the beautiful, matured bride, triumphant, victorious, glorious, overcoming. You show me that what's happening on the earth is not the, the enemy rising up to overwhelm the, the saints, but it's a literally Jesus standing up and beginning to utter his voice, and the shaking's begun. And the shaking will shake anything and everything that's shakable so that we, in the midst of a shaking, can receive an unshakable kingdom. So, Lord, tonight we begin a transfer of our citizenship from any place that we've been in a, in settled in a place of shaking. We want to disengage into the unshakableness of where you are and make it easy. Make it brilliant. Make it bright. Make it forever. Take away all fear all threats, all sense that we missed it or can't make it or others are taking our place and we don't have a place. Just dismantle the lies that when you brought us into salvation, you brought us into a family and we are your body and we are the fullness of you who fills all in all and you're not moving us around and swapping us out with parts. You are making us whole. So Holy Spirit, I'm asking you because you ask me, to teach and to open this discovery and to release your, your multifaceted way of ministry, that you would do so and awaken every one of us as we put our, engage our faith in what we hear, open our mouth to speak the things we're hearing and say them back to you and grow the sound and practice it in our homes and just begin to become a fully uh, move in a massive amount of individual transformation to the corporate transformation you're calling us into. Lord, without knowing what it looks like, we know who you are. And we're looking at you. And that's what it will look like. More of you. A beautiful, glorious bride that is in the image of of the glorious man, Jesus Christ, Messiah, Savior, King, Priest, Shepherd, Savior. Oh, yes. So right now we just say, Holy Spirit, we give you permission. We listen, we press in, we respond, we will hear, and then we will say. And we'll grow this sound together because it's the sound that you're releasing to the day the sound gets so strong that it calls us one together, all together into Christ. And we, that will be a great day. But every day until then is going to be greater and greater and greater. From glory to glory to glory to glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Rome, uh, Ephesians, I, I want to do a couple of things. And I really am not going to... I'm so excited for us to be together in this, so I don't, I'm not going to try to convince anybody of anything. I just want to release what God has said in his word about his son and who we are in the son and let the rest of it just happen because Holy Spirit just will make true, will, will activate the faith for us to receive. It's not about achieving or arriving. It's about receiving everything that was already done. So, in my short time with Jesus, I've noticed that so often we spend our faith in him for what he did, and then we try to do him the best we know how, and we end up kind of in a struggling because we're kind of resourcing from ourselves rather than receiving all that he is. Because all that he is is already all that we get to be, and we don't, it, but it's just kind of beyond that. So I want to establish the fullness of Christ that we're inside of, and then the, the vision of the future, because I believe that it's time to, to peer as far into the future we can to see the glorified church in the glorified Christ so that we can have a place to head toward rather, rather than a repeat, repeat, repeat. So in chapter 1 of Ephesians, a simple statement. I know you are familiar with this. I hope you are. Um, it says... Uh, Verse 9, having made known to us the mystery of his will, Ephesians 1, 9, having made known to us. Now, whenever I read the Bible, I read it as it's just something I'm going to receive, and I take it into a personal moment, 
And like you might read a letter from someone you love and someone you know, and as you read the letter, you get into the place and into the person, and you see them writing, and you feel their emotions. You let, the Bible's full of that, because the Holy Spirit's the author. And so uh, he's making known the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. So the will of God is already established in God by himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, that's really close to right now, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. So all who have said yes, who have had their eyes open, who Christ revealed in us, he's going to gather us into him. Functional, alive, vibrant, experiential, and that's the mystery of his will. Pulling everything in, pulling us all in, pulling us all in. In him also, we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined. Now here again, somebody made a decision long before we came onto this planet. Being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. So the inheritance that each of us have of the portion of Christ's inheritance of the complete we were given that in a decision made by God as he purposed in himself that works all things to the counsel of his will. And you'll notice in the scripture that God isn't very specific in detailing things as much as he is in describing the head, the one where the one everything's coming from. So what comes out of this uh, inheritance? That we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. The restoration of glory is trust. And when a man or woman come into full awareness that God is over everything, he's controlling, he's involved in every part of me, and I'm yielding to him in every way I know, and he will be there in anything I, I have need of. We've all been in that moment, but if we will grow into that moment where we just kind of know it's not up to me to make the right decision at the right moment so I get to the right place. And if I make the wrong decision at the wrong time, I'll be in the wrong place. It's just almost impossible, especially in the, in the acceleration of, of, of God bringing his inheritance, releasing trust, which is to praise his glory. My, my daughter uh, woke up this morning in her condominium. Her, her water heater was uh, leaking. And so she was off to the hospital and le left me a text. Dad, I, my, the water heater's no hot water. It's leaking. Can you, I don't know how to turn it off. Can you go check? So I ran over there. And um, yeah, sure enough, it was. And I'm kind of like, going, oh, gosh, there's one more thing to do. We got prayer. I got to get over. I want to be in prayer. So she called her warranty group, that uh, homeowner's uh, warranty, something like that, that you can get in when you buy homes. And they said they would send out a technician, I found out later, between 12 and 3. And I was scheduled to be in the sanctuary praying until 12. And I'm thinking, okay, well, what? I'm in this moment. I'm just resting. All things will come into the design and divine order. And so just about um, 1 o'clock, she texts me. They're on their way. And so uh, I pop over, and I'm thinking, well, this is great. I'll just continue finishing my prayer. And the way, because I was in, the more I was in trust, the more I was inside glory. And the more I was inside the glory, the less I was concerned about the details. And the more that I was in the glory, the more I was assured something was going to work. Anyway, I text Cammie because she's picking up the grandkids because it's, we're watching them while she's working. And uh, I see, I just, the technician arrives probably about 15 minutes to 2. He goes, looks, and sure enough, you need a new water heater. I'll put in the, the work order. And uh, he's off by 5 to 2, and I'm driving home. About the same time I'd have been driving home had I finished my prayer here. And I just, that doesn't, that's, I wish I'd say that's my regular way of life. But often it's not at all. Uh, often I'm too self-conscious and too aware of circumstances and the possibilities others might mess up. So I, I tend to then try to control. But today, in the spirit and in the prayer and the five hours of prayer prior, it was, it was a little easier. Even though I started the day really tired, really exhausted, and really, really spent in my faith. 
So the beautiful thing is then Ephesians goes on into a big prayer. Well, well, let me finish this. It says, in him you also, verse 13, that's us. We trusted after we heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Salvation isn't something we're trying to believe. It's something we're receiving as truth. When we receive it as truth, it becomes to us the good news of our salvation. And it releases faith in him, in whom having believed. Faith in Jesus. And once I believe in this Jesus, I'm sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So the Holy Spirit comes in every moment. I go, oh, yeah, yeah, I agree. Ooh, he comes and he seals me further in him, further on. And he then becomes to me and to us the guarantee of our inheritance. And again, our inheritance was decided before time began. It was got according to God's will, cannot be lost, cannot be stolen, cannot be taken from us. It's kept in heaven, ready to be revealed in these last times in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit's there. And then as soon as he's ready, he says, I'm, I'm first, I'm, I'm guaranteeing the inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, which means until I go and I call it into my possession, until I take it fully into manifestation. So this revelation that will go all the way through Ephesians over and over again through different ways of seeing it, Paul goes into a big prayer, powerful prayer. Very end of the chapter in verse um, uh, 19 he said that we, our eyes of our understanding be opened and it, what we would know is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So this power that he used to raise Jesus from the dead, which is every power word in the New Testament is in those two verses. I mean, just energy, efficiency, uh, dunamis, dynamite, uh, 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 effectiveness. It's just everything in this resurrection. And he put him far above all principality and power, might, and dominion. And every name that is named. So this is our Lord Jesus. This is where he is. Not only in the age but also in the which is to come. So it's forever. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Now this is the part that just so, if we can just, if we can just start letting faith take hold of, our, of this truth, we'll find ourselves so able to receive so much and give so much. He said, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. All that Jesus is, he's filling us with himself. All that has been accomplished, the Father did to him as a sacrifice, raised him. All of these things are ours, and we were with him in the process. Chapter 2. And you he made alive. Me, we made alive. Who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us. And I want us, I want us to see this, because if, if we can believe this, then we can believe Jesus today in a way that is unlimited. Even when we were dead in trespasses. So whatever state we're walking the planet, living in that, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. The alive together is that when he was made alive, we were made alive. We were not made alive when we said yes. We were made alive when God raised him, when God called him out of the abyss. When he said, you are my son, today I have begotten you, we were begotten. 
Yes, we came to another moment when we heard he was revealed. We said, we did say, you are my Lord. We did believe with our heart. And then salvation, yeah, it was rushing into our, our reality. But that wasn't when God chose to save us or called us saved or declared that we were made alive. When he made Jesus alive, he made us alive. He raised us, again, look at the word together. It's a, it's a Greek, com- it's, a, it's a combination. He raised us up together in union. So not only a, were we walking around dead in sin and, not, and totally un, unknowing anything, we were dead in sin and knowing nothing, but we had already been saved and raised together and made to sit together in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. I'm saying this because the reason... We so, I so often struggle in my troubles and I get controlling and I try to, is I forget that I am in Christ and what he has accomplished or what happened to him as the first born again man happened to me at the same time. And I'm receiving who he is versus trying to arrive at this place, trying to learn how to believe these things. So, um, made alive together, raised together, And made us sit together in the heavenly places. And the key is in Christ Jesus. So this is my home. This is our home in Christ Jesus. We're on the planet walking through time and space in the days of our flesh. Learning to live under these words is truth. Even to say no to the circumstances of life that are opposing us. And saying that can't possibly be because look at you. We're going, I don't want to look at me. I'm going to look at him. I look at you. That's who I am. I am in you. I'm not living apart from you, but in you. I am all that you are. All that you are, I get to be. I live in Christ. To die is gain. I was crucified with you. Nevertheless, I live, but not me. Christ lives in me. So that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. So a lot of big thoughts. So we just, if we, if we could just, all of us practice this right now. We have a future. God plans to show the riches of his grace for the rest of the eons of time by being kind to us, by bringing us forward into the future, into Christ, into the fulfillment. So he goes and says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Literally, salvation is complete when it's given. It's not a portioned, partial. That's the law. The law is this parceling out of pieces. He gives the whole thing, though we yet cannot see it, receive it, enjoy it, live in it, but it's all ours. And he said, not of works as anyone should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus Four good works. Think how far this goes now. Which God prepared beforehand. Before time began. We were known. We were saved. We were called. We were justified. We were glorified. We even have works that have been prepared for us to walk in. Now the reason that helps me so much is that I, it takes off that, like today. I had that moment. God's a big God. He knows how to get me to my daughter's house on time to meet the technician. He knows how to keep the day schedule flowing so that what he wants accomplished gets accomplished. He's more than able. I don't know what a broken water heater is going to mean, but I believe by the end of the day it'll be resolved. And, and sure enough, it's now within the next you know seven days or so, they'll have switched it out. Uh, but it was, it was living in that trust. You see, the praise... To God's glory is the restoration of trust. That's what, it, that's what was taken from, that was what was forfeited by Adam and Eve in the garden in, in place of knowledge to have control. Instead, they were in complete care for by glory inside of everything. And then they said, well, if we could actually know a little more about knowledge of good and evil, then we could be like God. We could be independent of God. We could do what God is doing and we could be God for ourselves. And we all know what that feels like because it's really miserable self-consciousness, self-awareness, self-sin, sin, sin, sin. And then all we do is try to make ourselves righteous. So that is a huge thing. Made, made alive together, raised together, 
seated together for the rest of the eternity. God's going to show off his grace toward us in being kind, demonstrating, look how, much my, how rich my graces are. Look, I'm another wave of kindness to my body. And we have work already prepared beforehand that we're going to walk in. Wow. Wow. So can we practice receiving that? This is not, there's not something in your mind, not, at least I mean, my mind can't, I can't hold that, but my heart can't. I don't have to understand it. I can just receive it as truth. So something we could say, I'll, I'll, I'll format, format it. You could say it with me afterwards, and we'll just say it together. Um, I am in Christ. Let's say, I am in Christ. I was made alive together with him. I was raised together with him. I was seated together with him in heavenly places. So that in the ages to come, God will show his grace by being kind to me, to we. I have works to do that God has given me to do before time began. This is where I am. This is whom I, who I believe. I am sealed by the Holy Spirit. As a guarantee of this inheritance to the redemption of the purchased possession to completion. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You put it into your vocabulary of prayer. Remember, the, the, the maturity of a son is that you can say back to God what he says to you. The immaturity of a baby is they cannot yet speak. And that's in the Greek. The Greek, the full matured son is a wehos. And they can, they can say, they, hold, they have a confession they hold before God. This is a great confession for us to take hold of. And again, it works the best when your soul says no. When your soul is being overwhelmed in circumstances and con conflict, just start to speak. And you will come into the presence because God's word being spoken activates the sealing uh, uh, Holy Spirit who's always there ready to say, yeah, 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 that's true. Build it, grow it, go to the scripture, let it become yours. But it gets bigger. This scripture freaked me out when I was 30 years ago when I first heard somebody preach this. So far away from what anything I could see would happen. Chapter 3, verse 8. Rushing ahead. Chapter 3, verse 8. To me, who, uh, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given to me that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. I was praying and I felt a strong prayer today going, Lord, I, I don't even know you. All that you are, I haven't seen you. I must, I must, I, I, I'm not satisfied with what I have discovered of you and what you've shown me. There's so much more. The unsearchable riches of Christ. That was my prayer. And to make all see, this is Paul's apostleship, what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages have been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that now, now this, is, this will be the church in massive, in, in our maturity, to the intent that now the manifold, which is a multivariated, faceted wisdom of God, which is all of Christ in display, might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. There will come the day when we know so well what we have, what we have been brought into and who we are under, who's, who is our head, the body that we represent, that we will be declaring and making known, and principalities and powers in the heavenly places will be bowing the knee. And they will be yielding to the place of the glorious Christ. According to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, 
Again, it can be really big and heady, and you can go, well, yeah, what, that, what does that have to do with my life? Because my life is, you know, not in anywhere near that. It's, again, we receive truth. We, bet, we, we nurse. We meditate the truth. We let it grow inside of us. We begin to get a, our own vocabulary with these words. We say them back to God, and we then begin to be transformed from glory to glory inside of the truth. So, not to lose the moment, let's, take, let's, let's declare this into our life. We'll do it together. Um, Father God, thank you for the mystery that you have hidden for the ages, but have now made known to us. This Christ in us, the hope of glory, and to make us see the fellowship of this mystery to the intent that now the multifaceted wisdom of God might be made known by us, the church, to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which you accomplished in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We're a part of something so huge by being in Christ, multifaceted, many-membered. Paul prays a prayer in chapter 3, verse 14, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So everyone who has named the name of Jesus, believed in their heart for the resurrection, and confessed with their mouth to him as Lord, there we're in the family, and it's a family in heaven and earth, that he would grant us, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through the Spirit in our inner man. That Christ would dwell in our hearts through faith, that we, each of us, being rooted and grounded in love, we're going to now start doing something that, that that's, I, I have faith for this because I've seen it working in my life. He's, each individual member grows up into him. Is Each of us make it a point to say, I will agree with what you say and I will, be, I will receive what you say as truth and I will accept it as, as what it is it is. And as each of us do this, we increase the capacity to hold God and share God with one another. And we begin to pull all of life from Christ and give away all of Christ's life to each other. And we start a synergy that is where the, we call the edification of the body in love. So first it's focused. Holy Spirit, come. Uh, God the Father, we need the Holy Spirit to come to each individual and strengthen each of us in our inner man so that Christ can dwell in each of our hearts by faith so that each of us are rooted and grounded in love. And that is kind of like my responsibility. I've got to make sure that I believe that and I'm experiencing that by faith, in hope, with joy, in the fruit, because therein is union. And I'm, main, I'm practicing the union that it was already mine, because this is where I am. When, when I wasn't even believing in Jesus, I was, re, I was already alive in Jesus, but I just hadn't accessed that. So therefore, it really wasn't. And I was living in the dictates of the world and of the sons of disobedience. But it wasn't, I, it wasn't when I said, Jesus, come into my heart, did he say, okay, you can be saved too. Or you can be raised too. Or you can be seated too. Or I'll get a future for you too. It was already given in the resurrection, in the ascension. <clears throat> so now he goes and he shifts. That we may be able to comprehend I know this is heady, but I want it to go into personal application because this shows me that I have a place, we have a place, nobody has a misplaced, nobody is mis displaced, we have something. He says I, that we may be able to comprehend. The word comprehend is really the word apprehend. We may apprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ. This is the beginning of what I see coming as the high priest of our confession begins to become the one man who connects us all to God, 
and to which we are all in, to which we all yield to, to which he is the head of the church, of the body, to which he is the cornerstone of the temple, to which we are just all coming into collabor into agreement with and yielded to. And when we start doing that, can you imagine every one of us here, everyone online, everyone in, in their homes in their day, we're going, oh, show me your love. The width, the length, the depth, the height. I want to experience the love, the width, the length, the depth, and height. And I'm doing that. And Allie's doing that. And it just starts growing. And we're all pulling it. We're pulling it. We're pulling it. And it's not, it's not love. The love of God is only seen or received in the love of God. Jesus loving us, not others loving us. That is, can be an extension of God's love, but it is never this... The, the source of God's love. The source of God's love is Holy Spirit pouring into our heart. The source of God's love is, is, is receiving, abiding, holding ourselves in the commandment that we are loved and living inside that love, just as Jesus taught us, John 14, 15. So here we are, comprehending. Now all of a sudden we're apprehending. Apprehending love. And what causes us to know this love of Christ which passes knowledge that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. Every time we feel our separation, and fear, or anxiousness, or dread, or wish I could, I wonder if I ever will, I don't know if I'll ever have the, the joy of life that I'd hoped for, step away and begin to gaze and begin to say, I want to apprehend with everyone else the width, the breadth, the length, and depth. I want to know experientially this love that you have that is the, f the outcome of this love experience is the fullness of God. And I promise you, it may take you five minutes or it may take you longer than that if your soul's really locked itself in a, in a circle. But if you will, if we practice this turning to Jesus, the veils start falling off faster and faster. And it's less and less time before you're going, can't believe how loved I am and how complete I am and how Christ is everything. I am aware, I'm overwhelmed. And it's, it's you see, because we were never made to be satisfied by anything else than Jesus Christ. We we're meant to be a blessing all over the place. But the one who fills the place that we were made to hold is Jesus Christ. And when we practice this, we begin to become the solution, not the problem. We become the givers, not the takers. So he goes on, he says, now that's going to cause the fullness of God. Verse 20, it's going to cut God's able to do abundantly above all we ask or think according to power. And to him will be glory in the church in Christ Jesus. The church is in Christ Jesus. We're not an entity related to the archbishop. We are in Christ. The entirety of the living multi-member, billion members and billion, billion members of the body of Christ are in Christ. So that's why we each have access to the one, one head. So therefore, he says in verse 4, chapter 4, I, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, which is all that we've just read. <clears throat> with all lowliness. Now notice the posture of the heart and the posture of the soul. This is the place the contentions rise and the fears rise and then we begin to act out ways that are unbecoming of our faith. With all lowliness, gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love. So this love that we're now experiencing gives us the capacity to, to give room for so much. We can bear with one another in love. We can let love cover the multitude of sins. We're not trying to solve problems and resolve issues. We're giving room because... We have a high calling, and it's to walk worthy of the high calling. We have to walk in the lowliness, the gentleness, the long-suffering, the humility of Jesus Christ while we while walk out our day. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. So the Holy Spirit's in unity, and he's, he's in, united with Father and Son. They are in one. They, they, they are agree as one on the earth, and they are one in heaven, according to 1 John 5. So when we come into the unity, we try to keep the unity of the Spirit by in this in walking in peace, because there is one body, one spirit, just as we are called with one hope of your calling. 
I don't, whatever's happened in all of our journey so far, or whatever's about to happen in the journey ahead, our calling has one hope, and it never dissipates. His callings are without repentance. He never comes up with plan B, plan D. He has plan Jesus. We're just one plan. And so there's, there's not a multiple body. So there's just one body. There's one spirit, and there's one hope of our calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. So, we, so the oneness we're being compacted into is Christ. And, and, and we are submitting to him more than we are asking him to submit to us and do our bidding and try to get to what we think he's going. So jumping ahead because we're running out of time. Verse 11, and then I want to pray. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. Whoa, whoa. no, I, I missed that. We need to let that, that one prayer come in. So, can we just say this again as a confession before the Lord? Father, I thank you. You are the father of all, of the whole family in heaven and earth. And that you grant to each of us from the riches of your glory, to strengthen us with might through your spirit in our inner man so Christ can dwell in our heart by faith and we can be rooted and grounded in love. That we might apprehend together with all of the saints the width, length, depth, height, and to know this love of God passes all knowledge. To be filled with the fullness of God. You're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think, Father. According to the power that's working in us. Oh, praise you, Jesus. To you, Father, be glory in the church in Christ Jesus, to all generations, forever and ever. There's one body, one spirit, one hope of our calling, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in us all. Whew. See, the lie of separation and the lie of being displaced because of behavior or prior bad decisions is such, it's all back to the trying to relate to the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. I got to do right to get the right thing to come. I got to, and, and this receiving what God has saw, resolved in his son is the only, is the, is the pattern into the future. So he says that he gave us apostles, prophets, pa evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints, or really the old King James says, for the perfecting of the saints. This is where it gets so exciting. He's perfecting us, which means to make us complete, fixing what's broken, Restoring what's been rusted out. Bringing completeness, wholeness. Not perfection in, in, as the idea that we are unmarred, but that he's taken our marring and made him into beauty. He's taken our ashes and brought him into the beauty. And why? Because there's a work of ministry for each of us. And what is the work of ministry? It's to edify or to build the body of Jesus Christ. So the function that we begin to see is each of us starts to have a sense of, I have a part to play in edifying the body. And that's, but it all comes from the head. So he says, till we all come, and here's another one of those lofty visions of the future that will be fulfilled in our day. 
until we all come, not some of us come, not most of us come, but we all come to the unity of the faith. There's unity of the spirit, there's unity of the faith, and there's unity of the knowledge of the Son of God. In the word knowledge, it all comes from the Greek word gnosko. One is to have experience, to know. One is to be known, which is to have a repeated experience in a similar fashion. So there's a recognition in this place. And then there's knowledge in this case, which is the full recognition. The full recognition. Beloved, we're going, we're going to be where we can see Jesus anywhere. We recognize him everywhere. And we know when he's not there. We sense his spirit. We know his way. We know his will. We know his, the fruit. And this is the son of God. To come into the unity of the spirit. Unity of the faith. And the unity of the full recognition of the son of God. To a perfect man. To completeness. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So again, I believe... One of the things is accepting Jesus Christ for his fullness more so than trying to get Jesus Christ to deal with our brokenness. Our brokenness, we often don't even understand how to repair ourselves. And so we're going, God, over here, over here, do something right here. And he in his sovereignty and in his wisdom and in his plan says, no, we just leave this here for a while, over here. And that's where we have to just always keep being led by the Spirit, surrendering what we can't resolve, pick up a cross if we can't fix it, follow Him anyway. And then just keep coming into this, this new place, the fullness of Christ, the fullness. The fullness of Christ. We have to, which is going to be, I, I really believe, is when we, ex, we receive functionally, where we live in revelation, in, in community, into the one new man, the universal church, sees Jesus as the man who, who connects all of us in fellowship with God. And without him, we have no fellowship. But with him, we have complete fellowship. It was called the Day of Atonement, when everything that happened was put right. And anything that had happened ignorantly was washed away. And there was just completeness we know the Lord has done this, but I don't see us, I don't, I'm not walking in this. But can you imagine when the entire body of Jesus has stepped into the fullness of the stature of Christ? It will be literally the, the, the authority and the, uh, the function and community and family and all things in place, even when they're out of place, even when they're in disruption, There'll be such assurance that all things are being brought into his, you know, back, being summed up into him. So, now, if, you, if that's our vision, because it's the Bible, what is the, what's the conflict we're in? The next verse tells us the conflict. That we should no longer be children. This is that word non-speaking. They don't have their own testimony. They haven't develop their own story with Jesus. They haven't heard and learned to speak back what they're hearing him say. No longer children, non-speaking babes, infants, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. One of the signs of immaturity is that we don't have our own storyline. We don't have our own testimony of Jesus that we're Submitted to, confident in, resting in, willing to hold our place while others run around and do other things. We, instead, we're ready to follow any new sound, new, new teaching, and, and not realizing because of the deceitfulness of our flesh and the uh, hardness of discover, discovering even our own hard intentions, there's a lot of things that are happening that people are doing unto themselves for themselves. Paul talks about that all over. We're not handling the word of God with, you know, craftily. We're not, we're not using it for our own personal gain. There was, there's this possible, and this is all there because it has to be there because part of the maturing of the church is to have the choice to receive and the, other, and, and the choice to be deceived. 
but speaking the truth in love. Now, here we go back to a conversation. It's speaking, allowing a truthful truth to come forth inside love. And love not love for someone, but being in the love that God has for us. We grow up in all things, in my professional life, in my fathering life, in my husband life, in my sonship life, in my money life, in my uh, house life, everything that is me, in all things I grow up into him in the, who is the head. Now, imagine this. This is, going, this is happening. It's growing. We can feel it. I know in this room I can feel it. You're all connected. Online I can feel you. We're all being pulled into the head. When we're being pulled into the head and we're saying, I agree with truth, I receive truth, I receive these state, this truth about Jesus and who I am or where I am, really a lot about what we're talking about tonight is where I am. I am here. I receive this. When we start doing this, we start coming up. We start being pulled together. We start being pulled into. We start being wired correctly. And you know, even our human body is smart enough that if you were to, my, my nephew at a time was in a very autoimmune, massive, terrible affliction in his, where his, uh, he was not being able to produce blood. He was, his, his, they, were, they were attacking his blood inside his marrow. So there was, they were going to the point that we would need to find a bone marrow and see if we can stop and restart, put, in, put bone marrow. So, and my brother was saying, well, how do they do that? And he said, well, once you found the bone marrow, all you got to do is put it in the vein. Because the bone marrow is smart enough to go find the rest, to find bone marrow. You see, we know, we don't have to know intellectually who we are, where we are. All we have to do is yield. And we'll start finding ourselves. This is who I am. We, we're going to look, we're going to get into that. The motivation gives the fruit of the spirit, the gifts of the spirit. But, but in effect, none of it works if we're not into him who is the head. Him who is the head. Because the head is the one who dictates where we're going. In a human body, today we know disease can come in and afflict it. And a foreign agent can attack it. And if in a weakened state, the immune system's down, it can overwhelm us and the body dies. We also know there are internal, like cancer, where the body goes into rebellion. A certain function of a cell says, I'm no longer going to be what, I want it, what I'm called to be. I'm going to be the boss. Everybody's about me. And that's what cancer effectively does. It says, it's, I, I serve myself. And then there's the autoimmune, which has been so plaguing of so much. Is it says, I, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I can trust anybody. I've got, this could be a foreign entity. I'm going to attack the heart. Autoimmune, dis, out, external diseases that find their way into weakened situation. All of that is, is really real. Well, the same thing starts to happen in the church when we have not connected to him who is the head. Because if we connect, if we go into him, Every day I grow into him. Every day I try to make my connection and union and enjoyment. He says, what will happen? And I got to close. Is it from whom? So if I grow up into the head, who is Christ? From him, from whom the whole body now. Join, knit together by what every joint supplies. Verse 16. So all of a sudden, if I touch the head, then I'm all of a sudden going to, Without trying, I'm going to start functioning as a joint or knit together, compacted. And what's going to happen as each one effective working, one of those power words, uh, according to every part does its share. So then the, the outworking is me giving and my giving goes outworking. And what happens is it causes the growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love, just like a healthy human body. When a healthy human body's functioning, everything's doing what it was meant to do, and nobody's fighting with each other, no one's threatened by one another, no one is uh, being overwhelmed by a foreign agent, you know, it's just life flowing. But this starts happening for the edifying of the body for itself in love. So I'd like to just make a declaration over us, and we make that, and we could start doing this this week. It, it's big, but it's not. I am in Christ. I am in Christ. I was made alive with Christ. 
I've been raised with Christ. I'm seated with Christ. I am going to be experience his kindness for all eternity. I have a work, work to do in Christ. The purpose of Christ will be made known by us, the church, to principalities and powers. And we are one body, one spirit, one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, one God, Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in us all. And we growing up into him are being perfected, made complete, so we can do the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ. And we will reach the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. We will enter into perfection, a perfect man, complete. To the fullness of Christ, we will rise into the measure of his stature. We have a testimony each of us, of Christ, in Christ, which allows us to be no longer children following someone else's testimony that not all times is pure. But instead, we grow up into him in the head. He is the head. We are the body. And from him, all the fullness falls and flows through us to one another. We are not pulling life from each other. We are giving life to one another. We pull life from the head and give life to one another. We declare in Jesus' name that resurrection life would flood our body, our emotions, our souls, our unique members, until this functional Christ is active in every, every member of the church. We receive it. Help us do our part to meditate, to confess, to worship, to receive, to believe, to live inside of these truths until you complete the full redemption of the purchased possession. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. All right, I know that was a really big, big picture, like probably, you know, like five pounds of steak. But if you'll take it, listen to it, watch it a few times, put it in your earbuds, you know, and make it your own storyline, you'll start sounding as, you'll start, you'll start getting these lofty visions of the future. And when the more of us get that, the more this world struggle is going to just dissipate. We will be causing the struggle of the world because we will be stepping in agreement with Christ as he steps in and starts taking possession of nations and people. So please help me. Thank you so much for your praying. We'll just press in together, pray for one another, share it with us online, share it, get it out there. Let's grow this. This is our future one way or another. Let's have it happen in this generation. Why not? Right now? Amen. God bless. Love you.